What's going on everyone, it's Will with Very Great Software, if you couldn't tell by these logos and the intro. No funny intro for you guys today, uh, it's getting kind of late and uh, I've just been working on rebranding the YouTube channel because I'm uh, moving away from Profit Programmer. The whole reason I wanted to do Profit Programmer was because I wanted to kind of tie in making money with software and I know that's a good niche. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just, what I did is I just basically broadened out my brand name but I still might be focused in on the niche so then that way once uh, I can get a good user base and good get good subscribers love you guys out of this particular niche then I'll broaden out into just general programming for you guys and for guys that don't know uh, you're not subscribed so you might as well click that subscribe button and that like button if you like it or dislike it comment do whatever you want uh, leave a comment below tell me if you guys like my logo I actually created it myself I'm by no means a logo designer um, I tried messaging people on Fiverr to do it and no one got back to me within like a few hours so I figured you know why the heck not um, but actually later my dinner I might uh, pay someone to upgrade it Okay, here we are. So today we are going to be talking about a general overview of how we're going to be programming our extension. So I said that we were going to create a URL shortening extension and still sticking around to that. I changed my mind a few times uh, since the last video in the series, but I'm sticking with it, showing you, you know, just how everything's going to work and why we're choosing to do these things. So this very first slide, hopefully you guys can see, I'm pretty sure you can. Things are pretty big. Um, I got an ultra wide monitor, so I don't really want to downscale it. Then, anyways, so we have our user page, right? So we're on a page anywhere on Google Chrome. What I would like us to do is to create this extension so that someone could put in like a hotkey, or maybe they click a little button in a corner, or maybe they. Uh, I don't know, maybe open up the little pop-up view. I don't really want to do that because that's just more code than what we actually need to get this thing to work because I've already kind of pre-written it a little bit. Um, but yeah, and then we have our Chrome extension here. Our Chrome extension is going to be looking at where the user is at, uh, whatever page they're on. And then once we notice that they are wanting to shorten the URL, then we're going to be calling our shorten URL API. And before we can actually use it, before they can use it, we're gonna authenticate them. The reason why we're authenticating them is because we want them to pay a premium to use our extension. Now, this shortening URL thing uh, can actually be replaced out with your own implementation of whatever you're creating for your own Chrome extension. I'm just doing a URL shortener because it's easy um, and it's something that can be easily replaced out for whatever you're wanting to convert into a SaaS application so that people can pay you through your software or your Chrome extension page. So you're probably thinking, how are we gonna do this? Well, what's nice about the Chrome browser is it actually gives us a few APIs that we can use. Now, in order for us to do authentication, uh, there are a few methods to, for us to call, chrome.identity.getAuthToken or get user profile. We are not, 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 don't ever use get user profile. The reason why we're not using get user profile is it gives back to you an object and within that object it gives you an email address that they have um, and probably a few other things. I didn't look into everything that it returns, I just know that it returns the email address which is what we're interested in because we want them to sign up through our SaaS application with this same email address and so if you could imagine that we get back the email address from this API call, right, we get the email address and then we send that off to our API server. The reason why it's not really secure is then anyone can just send a random email address to our API and if that email address happens to be a subscribed user then they can use our API and that is not not very uh, secure, right? So what we want to do is utilize already something that is secure and that is get auth token. Now this is very nice because get auth token gives us back a JSON web token and JSON web tokens are encoded uh, it's like base 64 with like a particular key I think and so when you go 
to retrieve this token from the Chrome API, you get the token back, right? And all it is, if you guys don't know what a JSON Web Token is, it is, it is just a mess of letters, number strings, and uh, dash signs. So you can't really know what's inside of it unless you have the key. And we have the key because we asked Chrome with our developer key, and then I think they just use our developer key to encode it. And then that way we can encode it or decode it ourselves to figure out what's inside of that string. Now, once we get this token back, we're gonna send it off to our server, right? So our server is then gonna look at this token. So this is what it looks like uh, somewhat. This isn't a real one, um, but it's gonna look like this, right? So we're gonna be sending this off to our server. And what we can do in our server is we can use something like Node.js or Flask and I think a few other um, web servers out there that have a Firebase client library and within that Firebase client library we can call Firebase.auth.verify token verify ID token and it's going to be similar it should be similar across programming languages I'm not this I think this is only the format for Node.js which is what I'm going to be using. You can you guys can use any language you want, um, but if you guys want to stick with what I'm making, I'm going to be doing Node.js. And so all we have to do is just pass on the token here to this ellipses, and then what the function is going to return to us is the what we would have gotten with inside of here. So this this is just a security step so that no one can steal. Uh, you know our API and use it or maybe even do a man-in-the-middle attack and figure out which emails are using our API um, so this is going to be very secure this is going to be you know within our own cloud so no one can look at our code no one can figure out how we're you know going about doing authentication because this is going to be in a, some back-end server that is not exposed so uh, after verifying the token ID like I said it will turn back to us an object with uh, I believe like name, uh, email, who authenticated them, like Google, and then a bunch of other things, like a bunch of other things. But all we really need is the email, because what we're gonna be using is the email to actually sign the customer up to use our service. And then obviously once we're done authenticating, then we can actually do the thing and shorten the URL. So I hope this gives you guys more insight into what we're actually gonna be building and just like a non-technical uh, overview of how things are gonna work. Definitely in the next video in the series, we're gonna be looking at extending our Chrome extension to uh, have an OAuth key so that we can call this function here. Because if we don't have an OAuth key, we can't call this function because like I said previously in this video that they need our key to actually verify us as who's calling this and also use it so that they can encode the user's data into a token which we can then later use to uh, decode and then get the person's email address to verify them within uh, I believe we're going to be using Stripe's API. So I hope that gives you guys a good glimpse of what we're going to be doing uh, within the next few videos, I believe. I think the next video is just going to be adding onto the extension. The next one after that is going to actually be creating a serverless function for us to use. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys could, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you guys didn't like it, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment. Don't just give it a thumbs down and just leave. Uh, and then also subscribe. It's super easy. It's just that that red button right there. It's just that, that red button. Anyways. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.